<laughs> Welcome to Celebrity Interviews with Paul. I have with me today Dan Cantrell and Elizabeth Strong. They are amazing people. Dan is an artist. He is a composer, a musician. He plays piano. He plays the musical Saw, which I think sounds mostly like UFOs landing. Uh, he has won Emmys for his work. Uh, he does uh, he does uh, scores, musical scores for television shows and for documentaries and things like that. Um, Elizabeth is an amazing dancer. She is uh, her her main forte is belly dancing, and we'll talk about how you came to that because that's kind of curious and uh, and and using that in the context of kind of contemporary forms as well um, and blending the two of those and having kind of a, a musical. And, uh, and artistic dialogue there. So Dan and Elizabeth, welcome to Celebrity Interviews with Paul. Thank you, that was a great introduction. Yeah, Accurate. so happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled to be talking to you and to, to meet through the ether. So that's wonderful. You guys are, are out in, uh, in California. How is life in the pandemic for you? It's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah. Some days are great and some days are hard. Yeah. Um, I, I like having more time. That's been nice. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Exploring more artistic endeavors that I might not have had time for otherwise is nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, more sort of consistency with home life has been nice. That's been really nice. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think maybe as artists, we try to like to think about things with silver linings, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, um, so we tend to silver lining eyes uh, our our experience and and yeah sometimes like sometimes there's a, a fair few of them and sometimes there's a lot a lot less and, and it, it uh, but there's but there are definitely perks and perks to the to the what's going on and and drawbacks as well. Yeah. Sure, sure. Back yeah. is not not being with our community has been really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that that's I mean that I mean community is what church does that's what we are we're got the gathered assembly and we're not gathering and even being on zoom lacks something and then there's all the people that aren't aren't able to or willing to or for whatever reason don't so yeah it makes it hard um, my dogs are thrilled though they're loving this. <laughs> always somebody home yeah. you know and uh the and the pup for day. <laughs> yeah and the, the puppy's not in the crate so he's happy about that too he gets to yeah. roam still so well um so Liz, you're 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 uh, you're a belly dancer. I I look at you and I think I wouldn't think like background in belly dancing first. So where did that come from? How did it speak to you? How did you find that, or how did it find you? Yeah, well, it's true. I'm not Egyptian or Turkish or <laughs> Middle East, um, and I don't think my ancestors necessarily were either. I'm a yeah. My last name is Strong, which is English. Um, yep. But I grew up in the Bay Area, and um, my aunt was actually a belly dancer as I, when I was a little kid. Um, there's a strong folk community here. Uh, mm -hmm. So I grew up with folk music camps and gatherings, um, exposed to belly dance and lots of different folk dances from Eastern Europe and, uh, and music from Eastern Europe and the Middle East. And... I could talk for a really long time about the history of belly dance in the United States, but I'll, I'll keep it a little bit brief, but there's a pretty cool melting pot that's happened like in New York and then also in San Francisco with Armenian immigrants, Greek immigrants, um, uh, Saudi and Egyptian. Anyway, it's sort of just all sorts of different cultures that all came together and tried to have a conversation musically and dance wise. And then in the nightclubs where the audience might have been from one region or another. So, or Persian could be another one. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, so it's been here for a long time and I got to jump into it as a little girl and then officially began studying it when I was 18, when I went to college and found a great teacher, Helena in Santa Cruz. Um, awesome, Yeah. awesome. That's beautiful. And now that's, and, and you, um, and you teach dance and you perform around the world and, uh, and, and even perform with your husband playing piano, <laughs> all that wonderful stuff. Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. really um, quite a journey. Like I would never, if you'd asked me when I was eight, if I would be doing this, I, I would have had no idea. <laughs> right. I, I pull up a video and it's from Prague. Yeah. The yeah. two of you doing a performing in Prague, which is that's a long way from San Francisco, which is wonderful. What a gift. What a gift. Yeah. And so, 
So you and Dan, I guess, has music always been part of your your life? Has that always been something you've done? From a really young age, yeah, yeah. What and what what instrument did you start with? I started on piano. Um, actually, okay. my first, my first instrument was just like this. <laughs> I think it was before you know you, they start you off with these little plastic um, pads that roll out, and you just mm -hmm. put your you're on the, the little plastic mat that says, hey, you know, okay, you're putting your finger on the C, on the D. Right. <laughs> and then I got a little keyboard and then I got, and then I, my parents got, got a piano eventually when I became serious about it. <laughs> okay. But then you've branched out. You collect instruments from all over the world and play accordion and play in klezmer bands and play the musical saw and, mm -hmm. and all those things. I dabble a lot and I, I, I love finding new things that I can wrap my head around. I mean, I don't, I, I do most things with keys that, that mm -hmm. I can, that I can work with, which kind of extends a little bit over into like, like something like the hurdy gurdy, which is like, you know, a string plus a, like a, a key thing with the left hand. And that's, that's kind of interesting, but, but yeah, I found the musical saw also that, that just, I, I don't know. I took, it took, it, I took to it. It took to me and it's, it's, yeah. uh, it works nicely with as a compliment to uh, I've also in, really enjoyed playing like percussion stuff like I, I studied tabla I never it, that's a lifetime of uh, of work <laughs> to what's, get what's, ta what's, ta what's tabla oh like the uh, uh, the Indian um, per a classical Indian percussion instrument that with the okay. two, it, you know um, uh, yeah it's pr pretty integral to uh, the, the Carnatic music I think I always confuse okay. the two. <laughs> You've definitely heard it before. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Probably in a in a Beatles song, if nothing else. When they were yeah. Oh, sure, sure. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> is that the big kind of stringed thing? Or well, is that different? That's the sitar. That's a sitar. Okay. Okay. Right. I know I, yeah, I should have known sitar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, um you guys you guys make both make art. Uh, both of you are talking about kind of Kind of forms of art that are, you know, they're not. You, you don't see like, um, you know, uh, tabler competitions on NBC. You know, it's not a reality show yet. Um, and and most of the forms of dancing we see, like in Dancing with the Stars or of America's Got Talent or whatever, are different from the kinds of things that you guys do. So what um, what difference do you hope your art makes in the world? <laughs> you want me to start and then you can... yeah you stay you well i mean I, part of the art making experience for me has always been the the interconnectivity of of uh, of experience you know but whether it's something that comes through me to to cr create um a, a it's not I, I sort of aspire to make things that are ultimately more beautiful in, in the process of, of interconnectivity, you know, like whether it's like the a muse sort of speaking through me and presenting that to the world in one form or another, or the the beautiful things that can happen when artists collaborate and and create something that they can't just create by themselves, you know, and, and I think that's, I think that's what drew me to sort of the film scoring process. And mm -hmm. because I, I sense the like, um, emotional ability of me uh, like the emotional drive of of music uh, and inside that that format and and then uh you know but it's all but it's all it's all my, my work with like you know working with dancers i feel that connectivity between them and i love to mm -hmm. be able to to um play th react to them have them react to me you know create this like symbiotic kind of uh well well, I mentioned your I mentioned watching your performance in Prague, the two of you together, uh, Dan on piano and uh, and Elizabeth dancing, and and it, and it especially at times there it was almost a dialogue. Mm. It felt like, um, yeah. and it, at times there were it was it was in sync, but there were also in times when it seemed like the piano and the dancer are talking to each other. Um, it was it was yeah. it was magical and beautiful. Um, yeah. And I think you know film scoring obviously that's like inherently collaborative because somebody else made the film. Right. That, that you've got to work through. And, um, and I think too, it's, um, I was thinking about this as I was, I was thinking about talking to you that so much of film scoring, like it's, I wonder if some of the best film scoring is music you don't realize is present in a way mm. um, that you kind of feel and experience it almost emotionally as it drives the, as it drives what's going on. 
Um, yeah. But you know, you tend to focus on the visual and you talk, you focus on the dialogue. Um, but then that that film scoring that then really kind of can make the emotion go one way or another. Um, we love Elf, the movie Elf. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> like Thanksgiving Day, we have to watch Elf for the first time, and then we probably yeah. watch it a dozen times every Christmas season. And uh, and um, my wife insists it's just not you know yeah. you know but um, but somebody did a trailer of Elf where uh-huh. they made it into a horror movie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. With the music, you know, so they essentially yeah. taking you know describing the scenes a little differently uh-huh. and giving it different a different score with the same video. Yeah, just kind of and you know, it's a powerful exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Elizabeth, you've had time to think about the difference your art's going to make in this world. Yeah, well, uh, actually, this is Dan's exactly spot on. It is that it's that making connection with other people and with the moment and and sort of transcending yeah transcending the moment somehow altogether it's like flying away on a flying carpet Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) well it's feeling the it's feeling the presence of the people in the room too which is why it is hard to there's something about a live performance that's so magical absolutely and i think i was lucky that way too like when i was like growing up as a dancer, just in my formative dancing years, it was always with a live band and it was always with a live audience. Mm, And a lot of dancers that got into it a little later in the game, it was almost always with recorded music Mm -hmm. and and more and more now it's with a not audience. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Digital audience or you're making a video or or you're on a Age where the audience is in the dark and that's um yeah. that's a really different feeling than seeing your audience right there with you when we went you to know, europe yeah oh. yeah go ahead dan you've been oh, to europe when we went to europe and even when we go around america it becomes clear how that doesn't ha- just automatically happen you know like someplace like europe where you think like there are amazing folk musicians all, all around and like why can't the dancers connect with the the, the mu- musicians in an easy way you know and it's it's like I don't know, it's maybe it's like almost a cultural or ambassadorship to like go and try to like find, <laughs> find connectivity in, in that in that way that's like truly mm-hmm. respectful to the to the, the experience. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, we all have our own little own little places in the world, too. And yeah. our own, own little plot of land that we stake our flag on and stand on and, and don't let go up. So that doesn't always help. Uh, yeah, I, you, I know, you know, personally, um, it's interesting as a as a worship leader and then as a preacher, um, in the in the uh, in the era of COVID, I'm preaching to an empty room, which is weird to try and bring like to try and bring like energy and excitement and enthusiasm. And the other level of that I've experienced is on Sunday morning, the people kind of are there and they're like, "Yeah, I'm here and we're listening." Mm-hmm. But I've also had the privilege of telling stories at Moth Story Slams, oh, and yeah. uh, the energy in those places is totally uh-huh. different, you know, yeah. and. And it, it might be the liquor, but, um, but you know, when you get like announced and they're like screaming for you as you go up to tell your five minute story about, you know, when yeah. you got a perm when you were 17 years old or whatever, they, it's a whole, that, that, and the, um, the energy and emotion yeah. that then you can bring into what you're doing because there's this live and energized audience That's right. um, that, that wants to carry you forward and, and have you give them a gift is just That's amazing exactly it. right right yeah yeah it really makes me think of uh you know like one of sometimes I, I was thinking about this talking about the your last question and it seems like you're saying a similar thing uh when you're speaking as well sometimes you just have to almost get out of the way and let the energy of the connectivity between the divine or the you know the the mm-hmm. you know the the muse or the or, or whatever but yeah. you, whatever you're trying to get Sure. And through you to the people of uh, mm-hmm. that's that's like the yeah. doing the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. So why why do we need why do we need arts like yours? Why do we need um, something other than uh, the rap music my sons listen to in the NFL on Sunday afternoon? Why do we need uh, why do we need these these I mean, things? I, first answer is just that humans are so nuanced and and especially right now, well just as the world becomes more and more complex, people become more and more complex. It's nice to have lots of um, 
a variety of art forms to to play around with and to mm -hmm. see what really fits you and um mm -hmm. that, that's one thought <laughs> yeah. i mean some of it is a i think a historical element too yeah you know there's like there's times that in the bay area we wind up playing music that that um even if you go to well we're playing like a his we're almost keeping a historical thing al alive for mm -hmm. you know the people that the people in the country from which we're playing their music might not even be inclined towards playing that kind of music maybe <laughs> they want to listen to rap music you know or, or... right right <laughs> actually that's right. actually exactly what's been happening and so the yeah. sort of folk traditions are slowly atrophying in certain parts yeah. of the world and, yeah. and actually with belly dance it's more and more that's happening in places where highly conservative governments have come in and sure you know, women's lives are are not as free as they could be and um yeah they're still dancing they're dancing in private and um i think it's i think it's really nice that there is a place where we can express ourselves how we want here still and um and then to go in and for now, for now. <laughs> yeah that's a, here. Um, yeah but to go in and be you know there's a conversation going on between like American women and and Egyptian culture and um, mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. or in my case, another big course of study I've been on is um, the Roman, the gypsies from Turkey. Um, mm -hmm. It's changing all the time. I'm watching that all shift. And I started learning it back in 2000. So now I've got a, a kind of an interesting record of that dance form. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there's a really nice conversation happening between the old world and the new world. And uh, and that that there's a way that that's going to help preserve art as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting some of these traditions coming out of places that now are now so patriarchal and so conservative. Yeah, um, yeah. I know yeah. it and is really fascinating. Kind yeah. of kind of, I there's an interesting irony in the midst of all that with, you know, out of communities that are enforcing burqa wearing and, yep. you know, and all that kind of stuff. Just just yeah. Yeah. What a what a what an interesting world that we live in. So yeah. so what do you, what do you guys can you tell me what you're working on now? What are you excited about? What are you doing? You got any big projects and plans and visions and dreams ahead? Well, I mean, we're I've been trying to connect with the 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 you know television film industry, and that, mm -hmm. that's kind of like one one of my on, ongoing goals to to get into that get more into that world. You know, it's it's kind of like um you know it. Once you start, once you start going down that road, it opens up more doors, and and mm -hmm. it's it's an ideal way for me to. Um, I feel like it's not only like something that I really enjoy doing, but but it's also um, an area that that um, is financially rewarding. More in a more, uh, it's more financially rewarding than the the sort of grunt work of of gig giggery that I do. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. You really have yeah, fun. Well too. That's, yeah. That's like the dream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I, I'm actually pretty happy teaching my online dance classes. That gives me a lift right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm mm -hmm. trying to take things a little bit just day by day. It seems easier than trying to get, I have things I'd, I'd like to make happen in my life, <laughs> but I'm trying to stay focused on now and, uh, and getting to see my students regularly each week is, is yep. really and yeah. just keeping uh, my own practice of like creating something new each week to teach um, mm -hmm. that all feels good and then uh, um, a little choreography I started last year sort of started whispering back at me again so I'm I'm playing with that and that's fun mm -hmm. okay okay yeah. it is hard to plan too far in the future right now I'm I'm hopefully yeah. soon launching a, an invitation for a pilgrimage to the Holy Land for January of 2022 but even that feels like, am I like pushing the, like, Oh yeah. But then yeah. my wife got her first dose of the vaccine on Monday. So there's hope, oh, you know, yeah, cool. um, hey, yeah. Yeah. so, um, yeah. you know, so it's just kind of it, that whole, like, should we do something? Should we put something on the calendar? Do we not? Can we, is it going to move forward? Are we going to have to adjust or cramp cancel or move or what do we do? Yeah. It's hard to, hard is to think like too far into the future. It's good though to put it on the calendar and, and adjust. I mean, that's like the yeah. artist day, right? You just have yeah. to adjust. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Put it on the list so maybe it'll actually happen and get done. 
Yeah. Wow. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, where do you find joy these days? Uh, back to the seeing my students, getting in my little bubble, making my little art. I've been making jewelry. That's a new thing this last oh, year. Oh, cool which has been bringing me a lot of joy. Like I just sit and I listen to Greek music and I tinker around with pretty gems and things. And um, and Danny has been bringing me joy wow. because <laughs> like getting to spend time with him um, <laughs> and getting, getting sleep. <laughs> yeah. That, that's for me. Uh, well, I it's a lot easier when the, when the, um, when the weather, when the smoke isn't bad, uh, the fires were, were were really hard on me because, like, I feel like you, could, I can find joy a lot in going outside, going outdoors, and and mm -hmm. being in nature a little bit, and and uh, you know, it's I feel like my main joy is through connectivity. So it's been a, it's been hard on me. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and then of course the other one is is nature so that that uh nature. right and with the fires you can't do much with that so yeah, yeah. Exactly. we are we're in a much better place now yeah we, for sure with the fire sure. we went out for a really beautiful drive out to marin and uh, mm -hmm. just the other day it was so nice yeah. just yeah we're surrounded by so much beautiful nature here yeah mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. sea. and some days where we just go and do something that's not that far away but that we just have never taken the time to do before yeah yeah and now you've got you've got the opportunity Yep, we do Absolutely. see the yep. stuff in your own backyard. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you for your for your time. Thank you for the gifts that you give to this world, and the joy that you bring to so many people in so many different ways. And uh, and thank you for the gift of your time with me this afternoon. And thanks for being part of celebrity interviews with Paul. <laughs> it's been thank really you. fun. It's really nice to to chat with you in nice yeah. insightful moments. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.